Our eyes will be on Qatar as the Arab world prepare to host their first ever FIFA World Cup on November 19th. This is Ghana Web's official coverage of the 2022 FIFA World Cup brought to you by Kempon Travel and Tours and then Dabs Ghana Web Mundial. Today we are here to discuss the squad. Uh, we've been hearing that the Ghana Web uh, Black Stars coach Otuado uh, is preparing to name a 55-man squad. We are going to discuss all of that. Which players are we expecting to make the squad? And which players will make the squad? That is the provisional team, but will make the trip to Qatar. My name is Joel Leshen, and this is Ghana Web Mundial. When I come back from the break, we are going to start the discussion with the Ghana Web managing editor Daniel Odro and Ghana Web sports editor Perez Ezwakwa. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. This is Ghana World Mundial, beginning our official coverage for the 22 uh, FIFA World Cup, brought to you by Kempo Travel and Tours. We are about to talk about the squad. We've been hearing news that 55-man list uh, has been submitted to the Ghana Football Association and the Black Stars Management Committee. To join me do the discussion today is Ghana Web Managing Editor Daniel Odro and Perez Ezwakwa, Sports Editor for Ghana Web. Good morning, gentlemen, and thanks for joining me here. Thank you, Joe. Oh, yeah, 55 <laughs> man list. Uh, let me start with you, Mr. Odo. Which players are you expecting to be in a squad? Well, I think Otuado had made it very clear that the players that he called for the two friendly matches in September were about 70 to 80 percent um, going to make the final squad for the World Cup. So I think if you are a keen follower of the national team, those players majority of whom um, have been in and out of the national team are definitely going to be in the squad. He seemed to have a fair idea of which players he wants. Uh, I think there will be room for maybe five, six more players that he's unsure of. And so I don't think, I mean, I was even surprised that he named 55 players. I think he could have gone with about 35 players <coughs> and thrown it to the 26-man final squad. Because 55 then makes it very difficult. But of course, it's not an official position. These are informations yeah. that we are picking from the grapevine and from our sources within the FA. But I thought that with only a month or less to Ghana's first game, uh, today is what, 24th? If today's yeah. 24th, then exactly a month from today, we'll be playing our first game against Portugal. I don't see why in four weeks' time we want to have five, 55 players because there won't be a lot of friendly games to play to pick from, from those uh, players. So uh, I think by and large, the players who played in the games against uh, Brazil and Nicaragua will make 90% of the squad. All right, uh, let me come <coughs> to you. When you heard the, that we, we are going to invite 55 players, what was your initial reaction? I was surprised and I wasn't disappointed. I thought it was normal because the official 55-man 55, 55 squad that will be submitted to FIFA, it's out of that squad that he will name, I think, the 26 or the 30 for the, for the, for the World Cup itself. Now, we have to look at the current season going on in Europe, and we have to do that because most of our players are based in Europe, and almost every day, a player is being ruled out because of injury. So you won't have the luxury of, should in case you name, let's say, 30, and out of the 30, maybe two of them drop off, you wouldn't have the luxury of picking from outside that 30. Yeah. So I'm sure that's the thinking that went, and that's the same thing that LV, uh, the coach of the Netherlands, that's the same excuse he gave. He was like, he knows the 26 man squad, he knows the players he's sending. But here lies the case where we have a, season, a packed season. Players are playing almost every 72, 36 hours. So they are getting injured almost every day. So what you have to do is that expand the, the, the scope of the collab. Make sure you, you have as many players as possible so that in the event that there are injuries, they can just pick one from that pool and add it to the men's squad. So you can say, okay, it's a case of indecisive on the case on the part of Otuado. But we also have to look at it from the point of view that maybe, just maybe, he wants to have a large pool so that in the event that our team is wrong with injuries, he can just pick one from any of them. All right, so uh, let's go into the specifics. Yeah. Goalkeeping, defense, midfield, and then attack. If you look at the pool of goalkeepers we have, uh, others are making case for uh, Ibrahim Dalad. There is Razak Abelewa, who is playing in the Moldovan League. We saw him in the Europa League and then Champions League qualifications. We have uh, Razak, uh, the, what was that? Orlando Pirates goalkeeper, Richard Ofori, and then Jojo Walokot, Nodin Manaf. We are yeah. supposed to pick three goalkeepers. Who will be your pick? 
Um, I think if Richard Ofori is um, fit, Richard Ofori, um, Jojo Wallacott, because of how he's performed um, with the national team in the qualifiers, and then uh, I'll throw a wild card uh, named Dan Ladd because he's a local player, because you won't have a lot of goalkeepers making their debut or playing if your first two goalkeepers are really uh, up to scratch. So I would take Dan Ladd because he has the talent and also because he's a local player and because you want to make a case for a local player. So these will be my the, uh, my three players for the World Cup in terms of the goalkeeping department. As well, the goalkeepers. You know, the thing is, I think of all the positions in the Blaster, it's the only place where I feel we are heavily, heavily short. Maybe the striking department also come close. But goalkeeping-wise, I look at the current crop of goalkeepers we have, and not just the three that we've been using, but on the larger scale, the goalkeepers we have around. And I think we don't really, really have a lot of good goalkeepers. Richard Ofori was the number one spot, lost it to Jojo Wallacott. I think he was impressive in both games against Nigeria. But I'm still not convinced that he is that person that you know, can, can take us to the next level. So he speak to players who played with Olele Kinson, and we spoke to Laya Kinson, and he said that whenever Olele was in post, the players were rest assured that they had someone who could stood between them and the opponent. I look at the current crop of goalkeepers in the Blasters and ask myself, do we have that number of goalkeepers? And I doubt. But nonetheless, that's what we have. And that's what we have to make do. Yeah, I think Richard Ophoria, until his, his recent injury, was, yeah. was, was a very commanding presence yeah. at the back. I mean, so he, he's got the physical presence. I mean, Jojo, he has abilities if you speak to, not to cut you, if, if you speak to the experts in the field, if you speak to somebody like Fatal Dauda, if you spoke to somebody like... Uh, um, um, Samir J, I've heard him on, on radio, speak about the qualities of Jojo. He's a modern day goalkeeper. He may not have the physical presence and attributes that Ufori has, but in terms of technique and his abilities, he, he has them. I, I also share in the same, not having the physical presence and commanding presence like Richard Ufori and the goalkeepers we've had in the past. Uh, but I would just hope that Richard Ufori is going to be fit. I, he's He's been off color. He's yeah. been ravaged with a lot of injuries. If he is fit, he's going to be my first pick. But with, even without him, I think if we worked on Jojo Wallacott to be more vocal, to command his defenders, then he can do some. Sometimes it's a, more of a cultural thing because of where he came from. Adam Karasi suffered the same thing because he's not vocal and because he may not be friends with these players and is unable to command his his area and arena. But if he's psychologically tuned up for it and he's able to command his area, I think he's somebody who can do a decent job for us. But yeah, I agree that, I mean, if you look at what we have had in the past, uh, he may not be up to the standard of Ole Kings or Samir J that we had in the last decade and a half. All right, okay. could it also be that, because you spoke about him being able to uh, command the boys in front of him, could it be that uh, where he's playing could also be a factor? Because if, if, if you look at the profile, yeah. maybe we are going to have um, a Tariq Lamte, Brighton. We have Jiku, Salisu, Amate, and then probably Gideon Mensah. The kind of profile in front of him also intimidates him quite a bit. Uh, you can't make that. But I mean, when Richard Ofori was playing the Black Star, he was a local player. He was playing in the local league for our stars. But he was able to demonstrate that he has the presence and to command his defenders. And we're teammates, and this is my, I mean, this is my, my office, and I'm able to arrange the, 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 the players and the defenders in front of me. They first of all need to trust the goalkeeper. If they do trust him, it's automatic that they are going to respect him and respect the, the direction that he gives them. But if they, they don't, then they are second-guessing the direction and then the advice is given to them in terms of how they should arrange right. themselves. So... I don't think necessarily because of where he plays. I mean, he plays in the, what? League uh, two. The third League tier. two. The third tier. But he's been in post against Nigeria, against in the two-legged uh, tie. He's been in post for some of the games. They've seen his qualities. They need to trust him. If they trust him, I think they are going to respect his opinion. Mm. Do you share the same thing? Well, I agree. I think, that, I think it's more of the kind of person he is. He looks like someone who is not your regular talkative person very reserved, very conservative. and But all these things for me, the coach needs to speak to him. If we have someone working on the defense, they need to talk to themselves and say, he's the coach, he's the goalie. That area, the six-yard box, is his office. 
and he needs to show authority. He needs to show that this is where I command myself. And that's where you have experienced defenders in the likes of Daniel Amato, who I'm sure will understand him and work with him if he brings someone. You can't just be a goalkeeper and say, okay, one the shot can I save it? And no. You need to be able to command your, you need to be able to be the leader in their box. And that, that's what I haven't seen from, from Juju Olaf. And that's my biggest issue because if you watch that game against Brazil, a few of the crosses that end up in the post, I feel if we had a goalkeeper who was in charge, or if we even had centre backs who were in charge and were understood what was going on, they could have headed clear or even cleared those words before they became dangerous. So yeah, I agree perfectly with him, but I feel one, the coach needs to talk to him. He himself needs to believe him. So whether he likes it or not, he's the number one goalkeeper for a country that has won the AFCON four times, for a country that is going to the World Cup four times. You need to have the confidence to be able to man the post of such a country. And I think from the coach's perspective, the likes of Otto Ado and Chris Hilton, they have spoken highly of you. Once the coach gives you public praise, it's the biggest, it's the biggest endorsement you're ever going to get as a goalkeeper. And if that cannot push you enough, I don't know what else we can do. But when it comes to my, my goalkeeping, for me, my first choice would be Nuridin. I feel that, one, he, he, he typifies what a modern goalkeeper is. And if you watch the Blasters, they are training in the games against uh, Brazil and Nicaragua. He trained more with the players with his foot because he's very good. Apparently, he started as a striker before he ended up as a goalkeeper. So he's very comfortable with his playing with his foot as well. And if you need a modern goalkeeper, in the modern game of football, you don't need someone who just sits in the post and catches them. You need someone who is a distributor as well. That's, the attack now starts with the goalkeeper. And I think Nuridin has shown the few times I've watched him that aside being a good shot stopper and a good penalty saver, which is something that we clearly lack in the Blasters, he's someone who can distribute the ball, especially for a Blasters team that sometimes we like ideas building from the back. If you are such a goalkeeper, who can just paint the ball, hoof a nice one to the wings, then we are good to go. So I will pick him as my first choice. Ophir will be my second choice because I think one, he's the leader. I think he's the de second deputy skipper or so. Yeah. He's someone that whenever I watch the black, I think he's the Jama leader. So in terms of <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of morale and yeah. other things, so he brings things to the fore. Jojo Walakot for me will have to go because I think he's earned the right to be at the World Cup. Dalad, well maybe we have to add because we need some local players. He's a young player. A young goalie who can go in the understanding the experience one, but my top three will be Nuridin, uh, Richard Ofori, and George Walako. All right, so uh, before we go on a break, let's look at the defense. I think that if you listen to the majority of Ghanaians, especially on the street, the defense is an area they believe we have the men who can compete against uh, the very best of strikers we are going to face in the World Cup. Who, 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 which players will be your pick if we are supposed to go with six? I think the defense picks itself. I mean, uh, it's it's a competitive area, but I, I feel some players have, over the years, been very consistent. Daniel Amate uh, will be yeah. at the heart of the defense uh, with Jiku and then Salisu. The three so, are So, are uh, uh, will you fancy a two-back or a three-back system? I think we realized that even in the Brazil game, when we reverted to a, a back three, we were better off. A back three because you have um, wing-backs in our team that can add to the attack and also solidify okay. your midfield. Because in the modern era, a lot of coaches are using the back three system because they want to start the attack from the back because your wing, your wing back must contribute to the attack. So if you have Tariq Lamte, who I think if he's fit, who should start, um, even though Odoi has demonstrated that he's got a cool head and experience, but I don't think he has the legs. At his age, I think it's about 32 or 33. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, in the Brazil game, he was exposed badly. <laughs> Obviously, the Brazil game with the wingers of Neymar and Vinicius, Vinicius. was a, a, a whole different that. level. But it exposed him very, very, very badly. So if we are going to go and play Portugal, which would also have a lot of pace in their squad. Yeah, uh, wingers like yes. Rafael Leao and the likes. I would play a Tariq Lamte, who defensively is spot on and also can contribute to the attack and has the legs to run down and up the field. So Tariq, Tariq Lamte starts for me on the right uh, wing back position. You've got Salisu, you've got uh, Daniel Amate, and then Gideon Mensah. Um, I know Baba, uh, Baba Rahman has been in and out of the national team. He has experience, but I don't think he contributes a lot with his offensive play. Yeah. And even defensively, sometimes he's suspect. So I'll play Gideon Mensah as the other option on the um, left wing back. So those are four defenders we have already. And then obviously you have, if you are playing Daniel Amate and then Daniel, uh, Salisu uh, Mohamed, 
that's two center backs. Okay. You've got uh, Tariq Lamte, you've got Gideon Mensah. I'm sure uh, Baba Rahman is going to make the squad. I am sure, again, um, that Jiku is going to make the squad. That's six yeah. defenders picking themselves out. All right. Uh, well, and the Yadro makes your squad? Squad, man. Yes, because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they have every squad, man. <laughs> <laughs> because if you look at the, the, the informed black star players who are getting minutes, uh, in the ongoing level. season, you cannot take out oh, Andy. The unfortunate thing for Andy Adam is that the other players in his position playing for one better class and even playing better and even offer more to the coach than he is doing. But why do you say if, six, by the way? Because I mentioned six and I didn't even mention Dennis Odoi. Because that would be a player who makes the squad. Because Let's there's, 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 <laughs> means that we, we, we might no, for, take for, eight, eight, eight defenders because yeah. the final squad will, will be 26. Yes. Yeah, so it means we might take eight. Because, you see, if I'm going for, if I'm Otoad and I'm going for Denis Odoi, I have in him a very experienced defender who is a centre-back, a right-back, has played this season, he has played left-back, has played left-wing-back, has played defensive midfield. That's about five positions in one person. We saw that against Nigeria. At some point, he was on the left. At some point, he was shifted to the right. Can Andy Adam give you that? Has he demonstrated in the Black Stars that he's that guy who can give us that? No. I'm looking at Tariq Lamte. Tariq Lamte, Tariq Lamte has played as a, a fullback, wing back, and a winger for Brighton this season. In the English Premier League, we can all talk about the minutes, but I prefer someone who gets 30 minutes in the EPL to someone who gets a full time in the championship. For a side out struggled last season. He was their best player, but I can't compare the two. Now, even Ali Desaid. Yeah. Personally, for me, I feel that he's one of those guys who has worked his way into the conversation as one of the players who should pick for the World Cup. Yeah. And if I'm given the choice, honestly, whether there's Palatis and all the things I've said about Denis Odeh, I'm, I'm more total towards Ali, Ali Seydou than because for me, he's also a center back. He's a full back as well. And offensively, he offers you a lot way younger, way faster than Denis Ode. So, yes, you know, and the other might be playing well week in, week out in the championship, might be making the championship team of the month. But you look at the options we have, and can he come in? No. Again, that performance of the Afcon, we know they forget too. <laughs> Tell you, the guy was horrible in the Afcon. <laughs> like, you see, there are, there are games that define players, yes. whether good or bad. There are certain players that, someone like John Boy, for all the things that John Boy has done for Ghana, don't want to mention John Boy, maybe the cash you remember. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. When you remember, when you mentioned the Adam, it's that half con game where he was, you know. It was bad. Bad, bad. Yeah. Extremely bad. So you don't want to have such a player, especially with the options we have. So, Andy Adam is a no for me. I don't think he's one player that Uto will be considering. No, not at all. And the Adam is a no for Perez. Uh, but don't also forget that there are other players who decided to switch nationality for the Black Stars. That's Steven Ambrosos. Will he also be in a conversation for the work? We're going for a quick break. When we come back, uh, we go on and then we talk about the midfield and our attack. As Samoa Jan, uh, looking at the uh, strikers we have in Ghana, will it be uh, prudent for us to take a Samoa Jan? Like the former Black Stars midfielder has spoken about that. When we come back from the break, we'll talk more here on Ghana with Mundial. Welcome back from the break. This is Ghana Web Mundial, official coverage for the 2022 uh, FIFA World Cup. On your screen, uh, you are watching a, a short video put together by the Ghana Web production crew about the players who uh, featured in the 2014 FIFA World Cup. Only four players uh, remain, and then they are in a conversation to be in a squad for the 2022. Uh, there is Andre Ayu, there is Jordan, there is Wakasu, and then there is Abdul Baba Rahman, uh, former Chelsea defender. Which of these four players would you want to see in the uh, squad for Qatar 2022? Now, before we talk about uh, Lai Kinson's conversation about Jan and the important players, midfield. There's been a lot of conversation. Bring in uh, Schlop because of what he has been doing in the, in the season. There is Pate, there is Abai Idrisu, there is Kudus. Who will be your pick for midfield? I think Schlop will play as a wing-back if he is 
drafted into the team, but he's also one of the players, uh, like uh, Perez describes, as versatile. He, he can give you an offensive side. He can play in the midfield. He can play defensively if you need him to play. So Schlopp has been one of the consistent players in the EPL. You won't be surprised if he's in the squad. I would love to have him in the squad because of his versatility and the different positions you can play him with. Uh, but I think in the, the core midfield, you are looking at Daniel Kofiche, you are looking at Mohamed Kudus, you are looking at Thomas Partey, you are looking at Andre Ayou, if you want to consider him as a midfielder, that, that is. Um, you are looking at, have I already mentioned Kofiche? Yeah. So yeah. Kofiche, I think Baba Idrisu will make the squad. But I think because of the, because of the inconsistent performance of Baba Idrisu, Wakasu would have a big shout. I know a lot of people feel that he shouldn't make this squad, <laughs> but Otuado clearly seemed to like him, clearly seemed to rely on his experience. And when he's on a good day, he can give you a performance. His legs and his age is, is, not, is not favorable. But I would understand why Otuado would take him to the World Cup because of the, the way Babay Dusu is played. In terms of the defensive midfield, we, don't, we haven't had a player who is... This defensively, uh, as a defensive-minded player, really stood out for me. In the Brazil game, in the absence of Pate, you could tell that the midfield was broken. Board. It was a big, big void. And the question is, which player would come in and do the job? And Otuado would rather rely on somebody he knows who has been at the top level before. And because he started playing again, yeah. if he was not playing... Then there's a case. He started playing again. Even when he was not playing, he went to the after. <laughs> yes, and because he started playing again, I would understand why he would take him. So for me, it's Kofi Chua, it's Thomas Pate, it's Mohamed Kudus, it's uh, Baba Idrisu, um, um, Wakasu, and then, like I said, if you want to count the day you as a net for that, then the day are you. All right, so it seems we have a lot to say about mm -hmm. the midfield, but uh, <laughs> let me take uh, the Ghana Web trivia for the 2022 World Cup. When we come back, we talk about your midfield options ahead of Qatar 2022. saw the uh, Ghana Web Trivia for uh, Qatar 2022. Before uh, we went for that quick uh, break, you were about to talk about your midfield option. It seems you disagree with uh, Daniel Odro about uh, Mubarak Kwakasu's inclusion in the team. Charlie, what more for? Oh, Charlie. For move on. See, that... We just for move on. The guy... When was the last time he, like... He'd be recently go get like some three or four matches. Okay. So they had gone like one year without playing a game. I'm a huge worker so far. I feel that he's one of those guys who has shown commitment, dedication to the national team. But we've gotten to the point where I feel we don't need him. And we can make the argument about Baba Idrisu and all the other guys. I don't think that worker so should be in the team. Talk less of starting. I'm with food. And I agree perfectly with. Uh, uh, Danny, when he talks about Baidrisu, I think he's too conservative for my liking. I like, yes, he breaks play, intercepts, but in the modern age of football, you need your defensive move for that to not do the break and pass. He should contribute more to the game. You look at Thomas Patton, the defensive move for that for us. He doesn't just sit in the back for a break up play, intercept them. No. He orchestrates almost everything. What Baba Idrisu gives the blaster is a block, pass, no. You need someone 
who is able to impact play. Someone who can just sit at the base of them, spring a 40 or 55 yard pass to someone on the flanks. Baba doesn't give you that. But but um, talking about those long range passes, Mubarak Kwakasu can give you that. If the guy play, if the guy, <laughs> if the guy play five, four they go out. So <laughs> like, it's the truth. If you like go and watch it. No, but we we've heard Asamwajan talking about uh, his partnership with Mubarak Wakasu. When Wakasu picks the how, ball. Let's let's go in. How many goals did Jan, did Jan score from those balls from Wakasu? In his last game for the Blazer, we saw he, he tried doing those things. Chalo, boom, beam nation. Why? <laughs> Chalo, it's not beam nation. No. You see, you see why I, I, I tell towards Wakasu, not because I feel um, he has to necessarily start, but he's going to be okay. in the squad because he's one of the very few players who plays better in the national team than plays at club level. Yeah. There are some players who can play very well at club level. A typical example is Eduardo Vargas yes. um, for the Chile national team. There are some players who come into yeah. play very well at club level. And the typical example in this squad Schlop. In, is Schlop, is Kamal Dean, Dean Soa. Yes. Kamal Dean, uh, Suleimana. Yeah. Yeah. He plays well at club level. He comes to the national team. And he's all over. He, he's, he's out of sorts. And you can imagine that we have, I've been mentioning the of uh, midfield players. And I didn't mention his name because he, he really doesn't doesn't strike me as somebody who is contributed at the AFCON. He was very poor. Yes, you can say that he had COVID. He came in yeah. late. He didn't train with the team and all of that. But even the qualifiers, which of the qualifiers has he been very prominent? But Wakasu is the type of player who in the national team plays well. I understand. In the two AFCONs ago is when he said he has to start thinking about his future. That's about, <laughs> we, we need hey, to hey, think hey. about we need to think <laughs> our 2019. future. 2019. <laughs> Was it 2019? Yeah, yes, 2019. after the exit in the in the, in I think the he, was our, he was our best player in that yeah. time. Yes. In fact, from 2015, when I went to the AFCON with the Black Stars, when we lost to Ivory Coast, where he was crying when I was yeah. interviewing him when he had lost his child in that period, even from 2015, he had been talking about having a conversation about his career, about having to give way for the younger players. But the truth is, he will make the squad based on what he's done in the yeah. past and based on the fact that when push comes to show, he may not start, but when you need, need. an experienced head, he could come in and help you because Baba Idris is so inconsistent. And with Pate's injury record, you need another experienced head. I, 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 still don't, I still do not agree. I feel that there are options. Options like? We've seen Shlob thrive okay. in that role for Crystal Palace. He's played as a defensive move for that. But, but he's more, yet... To show us that performance, whenever Has he gets he, an opportunity to play in the black you want, Unless you want us to go into the slop issue, which will also be another conversation on its own. Because there are a whole lot of reasons why it's not coming. And one of the reasons was that he's not been played in the preferred role. And the role he prefers playing is a midfield role. And when it comes to Ghana, we don't give him that role. It's but are he playing midfield for his yes. club? All he, the time? Most of the time. Mostly, he's a wing back. No. Yeah, 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 but he's, he's a, a, a wing back. At he, Crystal he, Palace, he, he performs in every position they put in. Mostly, mostly he's your left sided central yeah. midfielder. Mm -hmm. But the and wing backs always contribute. The wing back no, is literally yeah. like there, an, an extra see, midfielder. There, 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 is, there are differences between some, a wing back and a left sided central midfielder. Granit Shaka is a left sided central midfielder now. Okay. Martin Odegaard is a right sided central midfielder now. So if you watch Arsenal, okay, people say we play 4 three, 3 No. It's more like a 4-1-2-3 kind of formation with Partey at the base and the two of yeah. them. So you see Shaka roaming. That's what he does. And the reason why I will go for Schlop in that race is because Partey is not as mobile. He likes to sit in the middle, spread the pass. Now you need a runner in the team. I look across our middle for that. And who is that runner in the team? Who is that person who can give you energy in the whole nine team? He runs, run around intercept, affect, uh, offensively make impact, defensively make an impact. Schlop. But this Schlop is the same person who's played in the national team and has really not The thing is that because it's, it's, it's yeah. a conversation we can have whether it will try, but I'm looking at current form and I think... You, are, go, you, are, quick, you are choosing a, a try and error not a to, try and to yes. a system I, that no. somebody knows. It's, it's like I, saying that I should play Kudus as a, number, a force number nine in the national team. He's not played there before. Even though he plays as a number 10 and behind the striker, yeah. he's not played as a false number 9. But the, the question is, how reliable is the option? And even if I'm to, let's, I'm to, even if we are to ignore the, uh, the Schlop option, mm. Salis for me is the next in line. I thought okay. Salis actually should be starting with Partey in our 
For me, my main food three for a World Cup, if I were a coach, would be Salis, Pate, and Kudus. Salis, Pate, and Kudus no uh, for Perez. Now, the, uh, the, the, the part where most Ghanaians are afraid, and that is why uh, some people are calling for our all-time top scorer and Africa's top scorer at the FIFA World Cup to be included in the squad. They say, let's give him five minutes. In 2019, when he came against uh, the Katagi games of Tunisia, we saw what Asamojan did. Former Black Stars midfielder, Laya Kinsto, had this to say about Asamojan's inclusion in the Black Stars squad for Qatar 2022 in an interview with Perez on Ghana Web Sports Check. This is what Laya Kinsto said. Now, we, we, we spoke about the striking line, and this will be a controversial question. Your friend Asamojan, he, he said that if he's able to prove fitness, mm. We should add him to this, but he would like to be part of the team. Do you think that as someone at this age or at this time, is someone that should be considered? First of all, he has to be active. And he's not been active for, for some time now. So, so adding him to the squad, it won't be fair on the country and then some of the players at all. And, and then again, football, sometimes you can play football at home. He's been out for some time now, you can play football at home, but when you get to the bigger stage, you need to be 100% fit. Not only fit, but you should have much fitness, because the energy you put in a game is even different from what you put in trainings. So, for me, I, that question, I don't think it's, it's, it should be possible, because he himself knows that he's not fit, if he's not been playing actively, and we need active players to be called to our national teams. Okay. Now, let's do There are some people who also argue that we should have some local players in the squad, in the final 26. Do you think we should just pick players just for the play in the local league? Or should we be some quality? Or you think that because it's a national team, if there are certain players who have proved in the local league that they can play, we should at least have one or two in the squad? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a Ghana thing. And every Ghanaian player is qualified to play. And you talk about a local league, if someone is performing well, and the coach in charge believe that oh, he have what it takes to help his squad achieve something. Why not? Philip, Philip Bandier is, is part of the squad now. He's a local player. We can still, if another player is there in the coach field, he can help. Why not? They are all Ghanaians. If you can go outside Ghana and, and bring players that grew up in Europe to come and play for us, why not in our league? We should also do that. So that's former Black Stars midfielder Laya King. So he said Asamojan is not fit, so uh, shouldn't be included in the squad. Now, the attack. Uh, we brought in Inak William. We saw in the Brazil game, Asamojan complained that a striker makes the move and nobody gives the pass. There is Jordan Ayew, uh, there is Andre, Joseph Pinto, Kamar Dean, and all the other guys. Which strikers or which forward will make the cut for you? Mm. You, you mentioned so you mentioned you are referring to Kudis as a as an offensive. So player. I'm 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 adding uh, because it, it, it seems if, if if we are supposed to go with Kofitre maybe Salis and then Amate it means the coach will have to make uh, do for him as a number ten. That's the place uh, maybe he prefers to play behind the striker. Uh, Salis no no about how many games. No but but, <laughs> but but before we took Prince Watson <laughs> to no, start the game now he. Uh, just like Salis also mm. uh, trying to get into the team and he performed. So our front three, mm. to many, if you check their stats, now the most informed Ghanaian attacker is Joseph Pinto. So if you add Pinto and all the others, yeah. which attackers are you picking? I, I love Joseph Pinto. I think at the AFCON he really was one of our best players. I really yeah. enjoyed watching him. Um, but it doesn't look like the coach fancies him a lot. And sometimes you should understand yeah. the coach's philosophy, whether or not you you fit into the philosophy. I think he has some issues with him. But I think for people you can bang your hopes on, I, uh, Kudus, Andre Ayu, Jordan Ayu, because of their experience, I know their legs are gone. Um, but between Andre and Jordan, if I am looking for a player who is going to do some shaggy in a match, Give us the goals. I, will, I will always pick Andre Ayu. He may, I don't think he's, he's built to last 90 minutes anymore. I mean, he himself would admit that he, he, he doesn't have the legs again, but he would always be in the conversation because of his experience. He's one of four people in the squad who's been at the World Cup. Yeah. All our very experienced players have never been at the World Cup. And the, the, the World Cup is a different animal altogether. And 
I've seen too many players, talented players, reach the world stage and freeze because the occasion is too huge for them. And then not that because, in 2014. Not because they are not good, but sometimes the pressure gets to them. And you need players who have seen it, been there, done it. Andrea, you has that. So Andrea, you for me. I think Inaki is our look. He's, he's our best bet because Wobeme. I mean, I mean, and for what he's doing in Europe, yeah. you would want to give him a chance. I I saw the tweet by Samajan during the the, yeah, the, the, Brazil the, game. the Brazil game, and his movement is good. He was not getting the passes, but you could see that he was able to, you know, pick his channels, pick pick their pockets and and everything. But the passes were not coming. But also because maybe they, he's not played with this players before, so they don't know his movement, and it will take some time for them to understand him. So, for me, I, 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 I hope that Kamau, Kamau will come to the party this season. He has pace to bend, which should be an advantage. But I will look at him, Kamau, I will look at Bukhari, I will look at Joseph Pento, and I will look at Andre and Jordan, are you? and Inaki. All right, let's <coughs> talk about your best friend, Isahaku. In this squad, Charlie, it's a half was <laughs> under 23 then play. <laughs> Let's call up them for call up. Afnajan. They actually called him, his team didn't. They should add them. That's their level. So Afnajan won't make the squad. For it. It, oh, he will make the squad. The final squad, he will make the squad. As to whether he will start is a different conversation. I don't think he will start, but I think he will make the squad. Personally, if you leave it to me, <laughs> Afnajan, it's a half under 23. No, but you don't, you don't always take experience. Sometimes yeah. you need to give them experience. And, and I agree because. If you check the, the Brazil documentary they did on Pele, yeah, yeah. even in the 1957 uh, World Cup, he was not Charlie, uh, see, supposed see, to start. He see, was just going Charlie, to observe. Charlie, see, when you see generational talent, you see generational talent. Uh, you don't think Ishaku is a generational talent? I'm not convinced. Oh, come on. I'm not convinced. This is it. shoot. <laughs> oh, oh come on! Come on. Can't, can't you, you don't you don't judge a you player see, based see, on I, when. I see my issue. Perez my and I had an issue uh, about Vinicius. I remember how he <laughs> rubbish Vinicius. Today Vinicius is my issue with and, and yeah. he was 17, 18 year old. You don't rubbish a my player based with, on my their bad with, days. Charlie, my issue with this Arco is simple, and that's my issue with Christian Atu, Patrick Razak, and a whole lot of Ghanaian players. Two seasons ago, we watched Arco and it's cutting and shoot. And I saw the same thing. Two years on, cutting and shoot. Five years ago, we watched Patrick Razak, speed, <laughs> waste. T today, you watch Patrick Razak, it round the ball, thing. waste. <laughs> years ago, you watch Christian Achu, the same thing. And that's my biggest worry with a whole lot of, you see that there is the potential, you see that there is the talent, you see that there is that gift. But for some reason, they don't hone them, they don't but refine sometimes them. It's so, yeah. Sometimes it's coaching. Sometimes it's coaching. Perez. He, both of us are Arsenal fans. Do you know how many of us wanted to see Shaka out of the uh, uh, Arsenal? Yeah. Today he's one of the best players in the team because they changed his position for him. See, Sometimes yeah. coaching. You see, a coach see, must. See, yes, I have a problem I had, with. I had a same Ishaku's issue about Ma Matiweni Mkuju. Uh -huh. I thought he was on that on that same path. Yeah. But watch that guy now. Yeah, and watch like, him. Like, you see, a, a totally. A, you yes, see that he, the guy is he, learning. He's he's a, the guy is growing. He's coaching. So are we saying that someone playing at Lisbon? Yeah. Someone like Christian Achu. not being coached, what? Who, they, I was saying they didn't go through there. So let's, under 23, make them coach them small, <laughs> small. No. If I work with Kutiba, if they don't grow, blast us. That is a star. So, oh, Charles, I'm about Cremonese, you know, where are they, you know? Mm. If, 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 he's not even getting first level. Even ca cup matches, boy, they tap bench. I know it's a new team sometimes. Oh, you need time. I mean, there's a guy who was playing. Is it for some of you see? When you drop from. When you drop from. Coach, like yeah, Jose, Jose Moino, Moino, but, but who has people, very good words to say about him. Yeah, but some people have raised the objection that any young player who uh, who is who used to play for any of the big teams mm -hmm. in Europe, when you go for uh, like a small team like Criminality, you should be starting games. See, oh, I have, come on. I have no You issue. don't know what is happening. It's the same thing with Ishaku. I, I have seen Ishaku first, and he's, he's an incredible talent. There's some disciplinary issue there with him. On the and, then, TikToks, uh. <laughs> and, then, and then there is the coaching bit. But the talent is there. Do you know, the same thing happened to Kobna Ogusu. He's a player who may gate crash this squad. Excellent footballer, yep. but he has disciplinary issues. You need to get him on the straight and narrow. But the talent is there. Nobody can tell me but Ishaku is the talent. Are we going to Nobody know, are we, can convince are, me. That Ishaku is that, not. That, no, that, no, no, we, we, see, I, I, we, we cannot. We can't, we can't say that he is not because see, we saw what he did at Afina, 
under 20 level. Even with dreams I've seen a guy. Yeah. Premier Afinajan, League, he's good. Afinajan, but Afinajan seems, they are great talent. They are players, you can't overlook. They are players that in the next two, three years, if offense go to plan, if they apply themselves, work hard, and they can live up to the potential that we all see. But for a, a whole lot of time, for a long time, we've seen players with similar qualities, similar potential, that are faded off. And I'm worried because for two seasons, I'm not seeing the difference in Isaku. That's my worry. You see, I, I said, like I mentioned, I, I, mean, I had the same problem. I felt like the guy will dribble then. But you watch him now, the few times he's played for his yeah. side. And I would rather have him in the squad ahead of because I feel he has shown that he's someone who is learning. And if we put in the blasters, he can pick some, no. you know, some nuggets from the experienced players. So I have no issue. But I feel that for a player who hasn't shown to me that he's learning, I'd rather have someone else who is either ready or who is that willing to learn or who, has, who is showing me signs of someone who is being taught at training. And I'm not seeing that in, Afina, uh, in Isahaku. Isahaku. For Afinajan, I feel, what are the options in the striking department? In our game, in the call-up we had for the Brazil team, our striking force combined has scored only three goals all season. Okay. And we had real issues. And that's why, me personally, I feel that Coach Otuado should be thinking of playing Kudus Mohamed or even calling us a margin if and if <laughs> only he's fit. <laughs> oh, baby, eh? Baby. Oh, no, you see, the baby is, the, <laughs> that's a is, when you see people get emotional, you mention Jan. But Charlie, see, our squad, mm -hmm. this is our squad, yeah. our forward line. There is none that we can look at and so oh, wait here. I thought the idea you can just sneak in some goal for us. Oh, you mentioned baby, baby, all time African score. Oh, baby, this, goes. this man is so <laughs> inconsistent. <laughs> this man comes to talk about our class so that he's not been active. It talks no. about Tamaja who last played in you the see, Ghana Premier League. How many see, years ago? That's it's unbelievable. I said, I said, if and if only we have one case. man to the world. I'm not going to as an if he's a tennis player. One, the position, the position. Let's wrap up whether we like it or not. Wakaso doesn't solve any solution in midfield. Uh -huh. a, a, a fit and an informed Asamojan solves a, solves as a problem. Asamojan is not fit. He's not fit. Kudus, <laughs> as, and that's the I think I disagree with that when he says that we shouldn't try Kudus in that midfield. For me, one of our biggest problems is goal scoring. Whether by luck or by the grace of the IS coach, we have a player who is striving in that number nine role. You have a need. There's a solution at club level. Let's pick him and put him there. Yeah, there but, 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 but there is also the supply. As it stands exactly. now, as it stands now, we don't get as the supply. Now, he's, uh, he's the are only we, are we saying, supply in our team. And he's are the only ball carrier are we, are we in the team. Are we saying, saying, are we saying Shure, Shure can't do that job? Are we saying that Shure can't do that job? Good. There's, I don't think there is any player as I could do in our team who is more economical, who is more efficient with the ball mm. than Shure. So if we if we can have the two on the foot interchange, and luckily for us, Chiro also has goals in him. Okay. So why not have those two on the foot? If Pate is striking from 35 feet, those guys can work their way. I will start Kudus as a number nine for the Blasters because he's no, striving. Kudus plays as a 10. He's yeah. Chiro will play as a 8. As, no. Pate will play as the deep line for as a no. number 6. No. But, uh, and, and we might still be... Uh, for, for me... And who will strike? Uh, but, but, Inaki will strike. Inaki will strike. You see, um, for me, before we go... My only problem with Kudus is that at Ayas, he doesn't hang on to the ball. Uh, he doesn't hold on to the ball. Yeah, yeah. For, for it, is it, it is coaching. It is coaching. Okay, so uh, before we go, 30 seconds. Um, Perez, let me start. Who is that one player you believe the, in the ongoing season he has been exceptional, but he will make the trip to Qatar? <sighs> That's a difficult one. I feel all factors considered, you think that he's been good. That, but he mentioned Kabino Usu. I mentioned Bernard Tepete. Not because they are not good, but see, one, there is the, the, the issue of the position they play. We have a lot of options on both wings. Yeah. And unfortunately for them, they are wingers. Of course, they have goals in them, but they are wingers. You look at the coach's philosophy. And someone made a very good point when Patai Saku was called for the ball. I didn't agree with him, but I understood it that he was the only left winger in the team. You look at all the players, Itepete, those guys, none of them plays, has that left foot yeah. in him. That, none of them has that player who, you can say, is left foot, a natural left foot, can make f things work for us on the wing. So these are some, again, they're, 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 they are not versatile. They are just wingers. Okay. So I, 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 I think maybe I'll go for Tepete. You know, as much as he's been good this season, 
I don't see him making the squad. All right, um, so the one player you think he has been good in the ongoing season, but all factors consider he will make the trip to Qatar. Joseph Edu. Joseph Edu. Yeah. All right, so that's how we wrap up uh, this edition of the Ghana of Mundia, brought to you by Kempon Travel and Tours, the official traveling agency uh, for the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Which player do you think uh, has been exceptional in the ongoing season, but will not be able to make the trip to Qatar in some other editions before the start of the World Cup? We will also talk about the players who switch nationality uh, from their best countries to come and play for Ghana and will not make the trip to Qatar. My name is Joel Leshen, and thanks for staying with us on this episode of the Ghana Web Mundial right here on Ghana Web TV. I was joined by Daniel Odro, uh, Ghana Web Managing Editor. Thanks very much, Danny. And then Perez Ezra Kwao, Ghana Web Sports Editor. Until we meet again, it's bye for now. Thank <music> you.